The Battle of Iconium was a battle during the Third Crusade which took place on May 18th, 1190 between an army of German crusaders and the Seljuk Turks. It was now almost a century after Christians had miraculously recaptured Jerusalem during the First Crusade. After the establishment of the Crusader States, the Christians found themselves in a state of near constant warfare with their Islamic neighbors. In 1187, the Ayyubid Sultanate, led by Sultan Salah ad -Din, determined to drive the Crusaders into the sea, annihilated a Crusader army, winning a crushing victory at the Battle of Hattin. The Crusader army was completely destroyed and the King of Jerusalem, Guy of Lusignan, was taken prisoner. After the Battle of Hattin, Salah ad -Din captured many Christian territories from the Crusaders, including Acre and Jerusalem, with the Crusaders clinging on to a small stretch of the coast. Now, the Crusader states found their position in the Holy Land in great jeopardy. They were now in danger of being driven out of Outremer completely. Utterly shocked at the disastrous defeat, upon hearing the news, Pope Urban III is said to have collapsed and died. The new Pope, Gregory VIII, interpreted the capture of Jerusalem by Muslims as punishment for the sins of Christians across Europe. He called for a new crusade to the Holy Land to fight the Saracens and retake Jerusalem for Christendom. The Pope sent letters all over Europe urging them to join the crusade and many kings, princes, knights and nobles and peasants alike took up the cross. Among them, Richard I of England and Philip II of France. In Germany, the Kaiser himself also took up the cross. Frederick Barbarossa, also known as Frederick I, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, King of Germany, King of Italy, and King of Burgundy. In March of 1188, Frederick held an imperial assembly in Mainz, which he named the Court of Christ. During this assembly, he reconciled his feud with the Archbishop of Cologne, who submitted to Frederick, thereby restoring peace to the empire. Bishop Godfrey of Würzburg then preached a sermon, and Frederick, at the urging of the assembly, took up the cross. He was followed by his son, Duke Frederick VI of Swabia, and by many other nobles, including Duke Frederick of Bohemia, Duke Leopold V of Austria, and Landgrave Louis III of Thuringia. After taking the cross, Frederick proclaimed, quote, a general expedition against the pagans. Between April 1188 and April 1189, the German Crusader army mobilized and assembled at Regensburg. The first of the three kings to set out for the Holy Land, Frederick set out on the 11th of May 1189 with an army of 12,000 to 15,000 men, including 2,000 to 4,000 knights. After leaving Germany, Frederick's army was joined by a contingent of 2,000 Hungarians, led by Prince Geza, the younger brother of King Bela III of Hungary, and Bishop Ugrin Sack. Two more imperial contingents of the Holy Roman Empire, from the Duchy of Lorraine and the Duchy of Burgundy, also joined the army during its transit of Byzantium in 1189. Finally, after passing through Hungary, Serbia, Bulgaria, and the Byzantine Empire, the Imperial Army crossed over the Dardanelles into Anatolia by the 28th of March, 1190. The interior of the Anatolian Plateau at this time was held by the Turkish Muslim Seljuk Sultanate of Rum. The passage of the Crusader Army provoked armed resistance from the local Byzantine populations in Anatolia, and the Crusaders' horses suffered from hunger due to a lack of grasslands. 
Despite previously promising safe transit for Frederick, the Seljuk Turks continuously harassed the Crusader forces, laying ambushes and using hit and run tactics with swift horse archers. The Crusaders in turn responded, launching attacks against whatever Turkish forces they could find. A Turkish attack on the Imperial camp was defeated on the 30th of April, with 500 Turks killed. On the 2nd of May, the Crusaders defeated another Turkish attack and killed 300 Turks. The next day, Imperial soldiers were ambushed by the Turks and hit with arrows and rocks. Frederick VI, Duke of Swabia, was wounded, along with nine other knights. When the Crusaders camped near the city of Philomelion, on the 7th of May, the Turks believed the Imperials to be completely exhausted from hunger, and so they attacked the camp with 10,000 cavalry, infantry, and missile fire, surrounding the camp and pelting the Crusaders with arrow volleys. Part of the Crusader army, led by the Emperor's son, Frederick VI, Duke of Swabia, and Berthold, Duke of Morania, then sallied forth with 2,000 men. The attack was repulsed by an intense infantry clash, followed by a crusader cavalry charge. The Turks were completely routed, and the survivors were saved, only by nightfall and the mountainous terrain. Out of 10,000, the Turks lost 4,174 killed, according to the Turks' own body count. After a few days of rest, the Crusaders left Philomelion on the 8th of May and continued on, marching towards the Turkish capital of Iconium. Although they had won a clear victory over the Turks, they were not broken and the Turkish attacks continued. In subsequent skirmishes on the 9th and 10th of May, the Crusaders killed 64 Turkish soldiers and on the 11th of May, about 250. On the 12th, the Crusaders crossed a narrow bridge that left them highly vulnerable, but the Turks interfered with the crossing only minimally, with 20 Turks slain that day. Even more important than these battles was the logistical situation. The Crusaders continued march through hostile territory, supplies were running out, and morale was getting low. Desertion became frequent among foot soldiers as was death from dehydration. Despite this, the Crusaders continued their march until they reached the Turkish capital of Iconium on the 13th of May. On the 14th of May, the Crusaders found and defeated the main Seljuk army, putting it to rout. Seljuk records attribute the Crusader victory to a devastating heavy cavalry charge, which supposedly consisted of 7,000 lancers in white clothing mounted on snow-white horses. On the 15th, the Crusaders replenished their surviving horses at a bog, but the next day, 60 Crusaders were killed in another Seljuk ambush. That same day, the Seljuks offered to let Barbarossa and his army pass through their territory for the price of 300 pounds of gold and the lands of the Armenians. Frederick Barbarossa refused the offer, 
supposedly saying, quote, Rather than making a royal highway with gold and silver with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose knights we are, the road will have to be opened with iron. While some of his advisors advised heading directly through Cilician Armenia to the Levant, Emperor Frederick insisted on taking Iconium in order to remedy his army's food and horse shortage. And so, on the 17th of May, the Crusaders besieged the city, where they found plenty of water outside the walls. Meanwhile, the Turkish commander, Kili Arslan, together with his son, Kutub al-Din, regrouped and rebuilt their forces and retaliated on the 18th of May. Barbarossa divided his forces into two, one commanded by his son, the Duke Frederick of Swabia, leading the assault to the city, and the other, commanded by himself, stationed back in reserve behind his son. The garrison was small, and so the city fell easily. Duke Frederick was able to assault and take the walls with little resistance, and the Turkish garrison retreated back to the citadel, eventually surrendering. Now, the main Turkish field army, which set out previously to conduct a flanking maneuver, now appeared behind the Crusaders. Seeing the massive Turkish army before them, the Imperial Reserve led by the Kaiser turned to face the new threat. With half of the Crusader army now inside the captured gates of Iconium, the Kaiser's forces now found themselves outnumbered. It is reported that just before the battle, Frederick said to his soldiers, Quote, but why do we tarry? Of what are we afraid? Christ reigns, Christ conquers, Christ commands. The Turks then launched a tenacious assault on the Crusaders, pushing them back to the walls of the city. Despite the ferocity of the Turkish assault, the Crusaders managed to hold their ground. At some point during the chaos, the Emperor himself emerged and led a devastating heavy cavalry charge on the Turkish center.
Although the fighting was intense, the Germans managed to crush the Turks with relative ease. They smashed through the Turkish center, sending the wings and the rest of the Turkish field army into panic. The Seljuks were routed yet again, leaving the city at the mercy of the Crusaders. The Germans did not pursue, partially because they had been weakened by food shortage for two weeks prior. According to a contemporary German chronicle relying on eyewitness accounts from the Crusaders, the Turks lost around 3,000 men killed at the battle that day. The exact number of Crusader casualties is not known, but it was probably minimal. After the victory, the Crusaders took booty and loot, amounting to 100,000 marks in the city and refreshed themselves and their horses with wheat and barley. They rested for five days in the city and camped in the Sultan's Park on the 23rd of May. There they bought horses and mules, as well as donkeys, and stocked themselves with bread, meat, butter, and cheese. They continued their march on the 26th of May, taking 20 high-ranking Turkish nobles as hostages to safeguard themselves. The success of the Imperial Army against the Turks greatly alarmed Salah ad who was forced to weaken his army at the Siege of Acre and send detachments to the north to block the arrival of the Germans. Salah al-Din even dismantled the walls of the Syrian ports, lest they be used by the Crusaders against him. However, this proved unnecessary, as on the 10th of June, tragedy struck the German army. When the Emperor, Frederick Barbarossa fell from his horse while crossing the river Salif and died suddenly. Sources differ on what exactly transpired. Some state that his horse slipped and lost its footing, throwing him into the river, while others speculate that, given his old age, he could have simply died suddenly from some underlying health condition. Whatever the case, disillusioned at the death of their leader, much of his army disbanded and sailed home through the Cilician and Syrian ports. Barbarossa's son, Frederick VI of Swabia, attempted to continue the crusade and carried on with the remnants of the German army, along with the Hungarian army under the command of Prince Geza, with the aim of burying the emperor in Jerusalem. However, this did not occur. Hence, the emperor's flesh was interred in the church of St. Peter in Antioch, his bones in the cathedral of Tyre, and his heart and inner organs in St. Paul's church in Tarsus. The German army was then struck with disease near Antioch, with a large number of them dying. However, about 5,000 imperials and Hungarians under Duke Frederick did manage to eventually join the siege of Acre in October, where the Crusaders eventually triumphed. While the Imperial Army did not achieve its objective of recapturing Jerusalem, it did capture the capital of the Seljuk Sultanate and had inflicted considerable damage on Turkish forces, with more than 9,000 Turkish soldiers killed in all battles and skirmishes combined. The German Crusader victories against the Turks were impressive feats indeed, especially considering at this point the Byzantines had been struggling to fend them off for centuries. Also notable is the fact that the Germans did not permanently occupy Iconium. They simply sacked the city and continued on to their main objective of Jerusalem. However, if they had stayed, it is very feasible the Germans could have set up a permanent crusader state in Anatolia, just as, for example, Bohemond of Taranto had done at Antioch during the First Crusade a century prior. Furthermore, if Barbarossa had survived to reach the Holy Land and linked up with Richard the Lionheart of England, it is very plausible that a combined German and English crusader army would have been overwhelming to Salah al-Din and Jerusalem would have been recaptured by the Crusaders. Many historians consider Frederick Barbarossa to be among the Holy Roman Empire's 
greatest medieval emperors of all time. He combined qualities that made him appear almost superhuman to his contemporaries. His longevity, his ambition, his extraordinary organizational and logistical skills, his battlefield genius, and his political acuteness. According to a German legend, Frederick is not dead, but asleep with his knights in a cave in the Kiffhauser Mountains in Thuringia or Mount Untersberg at the border between Bavaria, Germany, and Salzburg, Austria. The legend states that when the ravens cease to fly around the mountain, he will awake once more and restore Germany to its ancient greatness.